social skills so important if you want to get far in life both from a business aspect and from a football aspect especially if you're trying to be a captain or a leader in the team you need to learn how to engage assess people's body language assess people's moods assess people's um, social level are they shy are they anxious are they um, defensive are they closed-minded is their body language turned away from you or uh, do they respect you do they um seem afraid of you or intimidated by you ability to kind of pick up all these social cues is so important in terms of dealing with different type of managers different type of um colleagues teammates and stuff like that then you can gauge and understand how you can communicate well with them if that makes sense and how you can um like adjust accordingly uh, from person to person what do you think Hundred mm, percent agree. So uh, a few years ago, I read a book called Mamba Mentality mm. by Kobe Bryant. And uh, <clears throat> what was interesting in this book, he was uh, uh, he was talking about how he is communicating with the teammates, and he takes ownership of their bad decisions. So that's crazy. So he he said that if a teammate make makes mistake. It's because he hasn't communicated to him what to do. Mm. And I think if you take this extreme ownership over the actions of your teammates, then uh, mm. this is where the communication uh, can take a next level. So mm. like you need to be able to explain to your teammates what they are doing wrong to not de- repeat the same mistakes. And that's that's mm-hmm. just to po- just to benefit the, benefit the team. But I would say to that as well is recognizing based on players or people's strengths and weaknesses and how you can communicate that to them so if you understand that like like last week we were speaking to um izzy he was saying like some players are like their game iq is so dead but if you tell them or some fight the game do that yeah I promise you just do that and the next minute the guy is scoring do you know what i mean sometimes you have to like dumb it or get into their level for them to understand and that's your ability to kind of assess people's weaknesses and strengths and how to kind of be like okay how can i get the most out of them how can i get the best out of them and the best within and um, how can i integrate my strength and link it with their strength perfectly how can i um so we can get closer to the end goal type of thing so i think this is relevant and in work life, in football, and in terms of how to deal with managers, and then in terms of like speaking to the manager, even like for example, um, for example, um, one of the, one of the guests we had in a podcast where he went from scoring two goals from corners and now he's scoring like six, seven goals in a corner, all because he just said to the manager, "Listen, I think it's better to have an outswing corner than an inswing corner." That little detail, but ability to kind of communicate that with the manager and then how to communicate with the manager given ideas is so so important and i would say as uh, as you said it's important to identify what personalities you are dealing with so if you have somebody that is more close to close in themselves it's you need to use the different form of communication than if somebody is more open like uh, in my experience is for me it's much easier to speak with somebody that is more close to themselves because they tend to not be the talker, but to be observer. So they mm. actually, if you if you think the people that that uh, the people that doesn't speak so much, they see more, mm. and the people that that speak more, they see less. That's just mm, my experience. Mm. Mm. What I would say is like I'm gonna add to that twist a little bit. The guy is the loudest. Tend to be the guy who's the most insecure. So they're ego driven, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So in order to get the best out of them and you know they're making a mistake, you'd be like, bro, do you know when you like slot it in that bottom corner? When you do that, you keep scoring. So 
that's your, that's your game, bro. Like, if you want to score a hat trick, I can see you're going to score a hat trick, but you're not going to do that if you go that good bottom left corner. I promise you, the keeper hasn't got it. You're the man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Say no more. And then they, they do the same thing. A lot of times that happen, they reverse the shot or do the same thing. Then that those end up converting it. In essence, we need to kind of like all the guy that is insecure. For example, you not insecure. The guy that's quiet. You already know that being pessimistic and negative on to a person that's shy or sensitive is no point giving so much criticism. That type of person, you need to encourage them. You need to kind of like put your hand around their shoulder, like the player that plays the best with confidence, like the confidence player. Um. They tend to be the one that are that sensitive to um, mistakes or that sensitive to um, criticism. Those are the ones that you put. You need to put your hand around them and be like, do you know what? Carry on. It's going to come. Don't worry. It's going to come. Keep trying. Keep going. You need to give them encouragement. So it's a bit your ability to kind of identify and recognize different types of personality. We kind of like give you a cue and how you should do kind of like get the best out of them and communicate with them and get them um with the, within the same side as you and get them working with you. On the other hand, if you're the quiet guy, nobody might know your personality. You understand? And if you're the loud guy, people in the team might know what to how to speak to you. But if you are the the quiet guy that is just sitting uh, in the corner and uh, analyzing everything, okay, okay, this guy said this, this guy said this. Even though you know others' personalities, the others doesn't know you. One hundred percent. So, uh, how would you, how would you show your personality as a quiet guy? What would you do? Mm, for me. A small talk, that's what I do. Small talk, just right. Try and get yourself involved, but not too involved, if that makes sense. See what works and what doesn't. For example, some people can handle the joke, some people can't. Okay? Some people like to be left alone, some people like they can be involved and get involved with answer. This is what I mean. Unless you test the waters you're never going to know how to deal with different type of personalities so the more you try the more you put yourself out there the more you find out and that's literally it obviously you don't need to go overboard with it for example just keep every training session keep planting seeds and then over time that communication that relationship that friendship that team will go over time so you just, you're just putting like small dividends over time and it'll pay off that's that's a good tip you know and uh, i'm actually the guy that is not so loud in the jurassic room i'm more like a quiet guy observing everyone that uh, their stories and ju i'm just trying to absorb as much as possible and uh, i have a tendency to be good in one to one maybe two to one three to one max talks but when mm. it's bigger group I, I suddenly lose the social aspects and I just uh, keep quiet. I spoke to, to the mental coach that I had that was uh, English national team mental coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me advice about that. He said that you need to put on a social face. So like when you have your game face, you need to put on your social face. So mm -hmm. you put on your social face when you enter the dressing room and it can be anything like I will be talk active. I will be the friendly guy. I will be the guy with the most interesting stories. I will be the motivational guy. And you mm. enter the dressing room with this uh, this social face mm. and interact with others. Others, mm. It's much easier to enter the room when you have the social face than when you just come as yourself. Because mm. then you need to work with your subconscious programs and... Uh, conscious efforts and things like that and, uh, and worry about the ex and uh, get rid of the anxiety worrying and blah 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 but if you just put on a social face five minutes you're out you're out in the dressing room and you can just just be the most active guy on the planet mm.
what I would say is anxiety is due to inaction. And that's what I find. Anxiety, all it is, is when you're living more in the reality of your imagination than the reality of of the actual reality of the world. But your your brain kind of differentiate what's what's an imagination, what's reality. So mm. the more you transition from yourself from imagination to the real world, the more you transition yourself out of anxiety, and that just comes through actions. I always say, you have five seconds to make an action. As soon as you hit more than five seconds, your anxious thoughts come in. Same thing. It's the same thing in football. As soon as you lose the ball, do something about it. You've got five seconds to win the ball back, right? It's the same thing. As soon as you come in the changing room, yeah, and somebody, right, if somebody, like, for example, as soon as you come in the changing room and you sit there and you wait and you wait, it's just an awkward silence. But if you, as soon as you come in, you smile, good positive for that language, you shake hands, you go, yeah, you okay? Yeah, stuff like that. How are you? How's your weekend been? Then it'll start rolling. But if you just like, and you sit down, bro, it's awkward. So you've got to take action from the first get-go. Yeah. 